Is 4K really a waste of resources or is 1440p blurry trash? Well, I'm sure you've heard both arguments, but today it's time to put them to rest and definitively answer the question, should you buy a 4K monitor? Because everybody knows I get it and that's it. I mean, I'm the authority on these matters as appointed by myself. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's break down the technical differences so we can understand why people might choose one or the other. Now real quick here, 2560 by 1440 is 1440p and when you do the math, that comes to a total resolution count of 3,686,400, whereas the commonly referred to 4K resolution is actually 3840 by 2160, which if you do the math on that one, comes to 8,294,400 pixels, a significant increase of 2.25 times the resolution of 1440p. So on paper, yes, 4K is gonna be a far, far more detailed image. However, I oftentimes see people talk about, you know, it's either a waste of resources or it's not worth doing because it's just so much harder to drive and it doesn't look that much better. And they oftentimes cite PPI as the reason why 4K isn't worth it. Because for example, a lot of the 4K OLEDs that people are buying today are 41.5 inches. And if you do the math, the PPI of that screen is 105.16, whereas most 1440p monitors are 26.5 inches, which gives you a PPI of 110. 0.84. Now, resolution and PPI, obviously much, much different. The amount of pixels per inch oftentimes is cited as how clear an image will actually look because if the PPI is higher, the idea is you're less likely to see the aliasing or pixelization on the screen. However, I'm going to disagree with this vehemently because although the PPI of the 1440p monitor at that size may actually be better, the image is definitely still gonna be worse. Guys, we are talking about a difference of 2.25 times the actual total amount of visual information on screen. So no matter how large or small you make the screens, one will always have far less detail than the other. So it's important to keep that in mind. Now at a certain point, the screen becomes so small that you can no longer tell the difference, but that's typically very, very small if you have good eyesight. Does it really make much of a difference at monitor sizes of 27 inches and 32 inches where you probably would be looking at buying either a 1440p or 4K monitor hopefully in the future as OLED monitors should be coming in the 32 inch size for 4K in not too long. And guys, I'm gonna tell you absolutely yes. If you can't see the difference between 1440p and 4K at 32 inches, oh boy, I hate to tell you guys, but if you're one of those people, you should genuinely go see an eye doctor. If you're close enough to the monitor, if you're not like 15, 20 feet away, you should definitely with 2020 vision be able to see a massive, massive difference between 1440p and 4K. But that doesn't still answer the question, is it worth it? Because sure, on paper, it's a massive difference, but is it actually a massive difference to your eye at that size? Now, to me, I'm gonna say definitely yes. However, I do technically have slightly better than 2020 vision. It may vary depending on how good your vision is. But I would say for the vast majority of people, the visual difference at even 27 inches is so large that it is definitely worth picking up a 4K monitor over a 1440p monitor, even at that 27 inch size. It's just a huge, huge boost in clarity. And beyond the clarity aspect of it, guys, there are a lot of game developers that are creating their games for 4K TVs and consoles. Now the consoles can't always run native 4K, but they are creating 4K assets which are meant to be viewed on a 4K screen. So if you can push a 4K display, I highly, highly suggest picking one up, even if it means you have to use something like DLSS or FSR to try and get that higher resolution displayed on your screen, it is definitely worth it. Now, if you just absolutely cannot run it, yes, 1440p, is a good option and oftentimes 1440p monitors do have higher refresh rates however i will mention to you guys there are definitely diminishing returns beyond 120 frames a second 
and certainly beyond 240 frames per second to the point where I honestly don't recommend beyond 240 hertz for almost anybody and the vast majority of gamers should be fine at 144 hertz especially if you're using an OLED display now on LCD I think the benefits are greater for the response times to go beyond 144 hertz but it's still not that bad on LCD at 144 hertz. I think it's honestly a good sweet spot, even for some light competitive gaming, especially at 4K. So that's my thoughts on that. I think if you have the choice between higher refresh rate and higher resolution, you should almost always take higher resolution as long as you have a minimum of 120 FPS on OLED and on LCD, probably a minimum of 144 hertz as your returns on refresh rate are far more diminishing than your returns on resolution. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.